guys welcome back to another 3d printing video so in this video i want to address something that all or most ender 2 printers will have is an issue with the z motor in the back and the bad part is that it's overheating it because it's pretty misaligned so if you have a creality ender 2 printer you most likely have this issue and you might want to address it as soon as possible all right so let's take a look at it So I haven't really printed much since I unboxed this printer and I've printed you know a few of these little wheels here because this was useful and I wanted to use up the filament that came with it and I did print my son a pretty large little hook that he really wanted and I'll show you that a little bit later and I have to say the quality of the prints are very good like I'm impressed so as this thing was printing I you know was just looking at it and I kind of wanted to like touch stuff here and there as it was printed so I touch the motors, the stepper motors here and there to see how hot they were getting. And when I got to the back guys, this Z motor right here, when I touched it, it was literally hot. Like the rest of them were just kind of warm, but this motor was hot. Not like crazy hot, but you know, more significant temperature change than the other ones. And so I started kind of looking at it and I noticed that, maybe you guys can see this. You can see how the rod here, there's a much larger space here in between and then as it goes down it tapers down closer to this channel here so the motor is putting a lot of pressure on the rod even though it has this pretty cool coupling that flexes it's still not enough you know to keep all those stresses relieved and so the lower the x-axis here is to the bottom the more stress there is that's why it works so hard from the beginning and then as it goes up it, it gets relieved somewhat so you can tell there how big of a difference that is from here to down there so but that's not the only issue so not only is this rod you know being pulled in in on the bottom it's also offset this way as well it's kind of hard to see right now because it looks pretty straight but if you would loosen these two bolts here the motor would shift that way but my whole point is is that you know it needs to shift also this way not only come out away from the channel so you know not only are you going to wear out the stepper motor the coupler and the connector here you know might get eventually wobbly over time in any case this needs to be addressed in the beginning that way things don't wear out and that's what we're going to do so here we are at the back and we have two screws here that i'm going to release and we're going to see what happens so as i was releasing that the whole thing kind of popped out so it just kind of went that way you can tell by this screw right here how it's so offset that way so if I pull it this way it gets in line again if I let it go you see how that goes that way so it really really wants to go that way like right now I can spin the rod pretty easily with my hand before I would, would have a hard time when I was putting this thing together I was wondering why it was so tough all right, so what I'm going to do, since I showed you what happened here, and, well, I guess I haven't showed you this side, but I don't know if you can see that, but there's a gap between the motor and the, there we go. Sorry, it's a little blurry, but camera doesn't want to focus. But you see that gap right there between the motor? That's where the rod wants to be, so we need to shim that out also. So the motor wants to go out and that way. So the good part about it, I'm not the first one to have this problem, and the great community of 3D printing has figured this problem out and they have made a little shim that replaces this bracket and a shim behind it where it has a multi-function on both of the axes that we need so so we're just going to work with what we have so i'm going to tighten this back up and we'll start the print of the part so i got everything ready i loaded some great pla here and make sure the bed was level so all we got to do now is start the print all right so i'm going to go ahead and do a time lapse here so we'll see what that looks like once it's done So we are done printing and this is what the part looks like. It seems like a really nice print here. Let's see if we can get this off the bed. So I have not been using any kind of glue or anything so far. So, All right, so this one seems to be stuck on there pretty well. There we go. Yeah, it's amazing how good that sticks with not even having any kind of glue on there. So here, guys, you can see our bottom. It's not super good looking, but it's all right. So it looks like we have about a one millimeter little shim there 
and it's pretty flexible. So the point of this piece is to, you know, shim it from the backside there and also be able to move it, move the stepper motor side to side on these little slots here. The next thing we want to do is take the, or I guess we want to pull out the whole motor. So what we're replacing is this black bracket back there. So I'm going to go ahead and run this guy up more. That way we have a little more flexibility on the bottom. So now we can just kind of pull out our motor and spin it. And we can get to that piece really easy now. So this piece is just going to go instead of that one right there. So all we got to do is take off the screws here on the top. Or should I say the bolts. So and then this piece just comes off. So then we just need to transfer these this hardware to the new piece. So that's what this one looks like. And then we're just going to be replacing it with this one. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I hope these holes here are big enough. So I got the hardware on the new piece. I'm not sure if that's going to work because you can see how much these are sticking out there. If that's not going to work, I might have to uh, wallow the holes out a little bigger. But technically, all we're doing is going just like that right there. And you can see how perfectly that fits or it's supposed to go. So here, guys, you can see that we can move this piece back and forth quite a bit right there. So. So that should give us the play we need. All right, so let's see if we can put this back on the channel. So I got one started, believe it or not. I didn't think I could do it, but it's definitely a close call, but it will work, looks like. And the second one to tighten up. So it's barely, you know, barely screwing on there, but it does do screw on. So now you guys can see that, that the motor wants to go that way on its own. If I push it this way, it wants to go that way. So it's automatically going, you know, all the way that way so that should relieve a lot of stress from the z rod here so especially as it goes down lower the, the stress on this coupler here is even higher so yeah this is awesome all right so i'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up really good too and that's it guys so now we are a lot straighter than we were so this should be really easy to spin now and it is it's much easier to spin so now i can even push on it and it will go down before i couldn't do that like it was just way too much stress on it so that's a good sign so we're definitely operating a little better there you can see now how much straighter the gap is between the channel here and the screw pretty successful fix i would say and here guys from the back you can see that it's pretty nicely lined up also all right well that's pretty cool let's go ahead and print something on here and uh let's print a little tray that goes into here so we can put our little tools in because that would be kind of nice because we have quite a few little allen wrenches and things like that that we need to put somewhere and that would be a great place to keep them so we started our print so this is probably going to take over three hours and we'll see how it turns out hopefully pretty good then the print is done so unfortunately we had a little curl up over here and i'll show you that guys in a second but other than that it looks really good and i really love the detail of this printer it does such a good job and i did mess up a few other things there too and i'll show you guys so what happened was the bed wasn't completely level and so this side was higher up and it curled up and i can show you that right there so right here you can see how rough that is i should have stopped the print and re-leveled the bed because you can see over here it was leveled pretty good curled up right there obviously because it didn't have a good adhesion and you know that happened the channel here on this side is on the right side I'm not even going to see this bad part it's going to be inside so and the inside turned out really good except for those couple lines and what happened there was whenever i noticed that it was curling i touched the bed meaning like kind of like pushed on it like this and the bed here guys you can see it moves around pretty easily and I'm gonna have to figure out why why it's doing that but look at that it's moving around pretty bad so I don't know if I need to tighten the rollers underneath or what but this is uh, not good right here so and I think this is what kind of compromised my print but if you guys look at the rest of it look how nice it looks obviously here I had too much squish so, but just the front here look at that it's pretty good and obviously here it got all messed up because of the uh, the lifting and whatnot so but the part we're gonna be seeing mostly is on this side and that part's pretty good and i'm guessing that line right there is because when i touched the bed it offset that's okay i'm still really happy with it to be honest and let's see if it fits in there should go right in there oh wow that fits perfectly guys oh man that is just so awesome well that turned out great and it slides out so good 
So you put your tools in, slide it out if you need to. Let's say if your bed was like here, you can slide it out. Still grab your stuff. Whoever thought of this little tray, thank you very much. And I guess I'll leave a credit right here somewhere. So here in the back, everything is fine with our little bracket. Nothing came loose. Nothing's weird. The motor is barely warm to the touch. It's still a little bit warmer than the other ones, but not nearly as warm as it was earlier whenever, you know, it was all offset there. So overall, I think it's a success for this bracket. And if you have the ender too, then make sure that your, you know, rod there is straight. If it's not, print out this guy. And also, I need to put up the credit for this thing too. So I'll put it up right now. So I'm still going to need to figure out what's going on with this bed here. That'll be another video. There's actually a few other things that are wrong with it. All right, so before we end the video, let's go ahead and put some of our stuff in here. Look at that, the glue stick fits in there fine. I don't know if I wanna keep that in there. I wanna keep these little tools that came with the printer, you know, these extra little screws. So it's especially nice to have a little tool drawer like this because if you have multiple printers, you don't wanna mix up the different parts and tools from different printers. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in there. This is the other bracket that was on that motor. And we got our little tip here, the .3. Uh, there's no room for the bag, so I'll just put it in there like that. I'm sure I'll remember. And there we go, guys. And all the tools fit in there beautifully, which is really, really nice. So I'm very happy that I got that fixed in the back there with the T-screw there and the motor. We did find a new problem today with the bed being loose. So we're going to have to work on that. But I have to say, guys, overall, I'm really, really enjoying this printer. I can definitely tell that this printer's got more precision than the modern price printer. So there's still a few adjustments I need to do, stuff like that. But there'll be another video for more repairs. So if you're thinking about getting the Ender 2, I think it's a great choice. If you can put it together, it's priced well. It's got a good sized bed. It's got a small footprint on the desk. And the precision quality seems, you know, really good. So if all those things is what you're looking for, then this is a great option here. Now, it might be better for you to go ahead and look into the Ender 3 because that is just a better printer overall. I haven't had my hands on it yet, but we will soon. And, you know, the build space on that is quite a bit bigger than here. But in any case, guys, this is the Ender 2. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And hopefully it was helpful with the uh, T-Rod there and the Z motors. Thank you to the 3D community members that, you know, design these things and fix the issues that you know these printers have and we can easily go and print them and you know enjoy our printers so big thumbs up to you guys and we definitely all appreciate it everyone that shares that information so if you haven't seen my unboxing video i'll leave a link here at the end go check that out and stay tuned guys for more videos coming up so if you want to pick this ender 2 up i'll have some links in the description check those out and if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more 3d printing videos so if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace